Hello there, I'm Rafael Di Furia, back at it again on another Friday night, and this week I wanted to talk about a subject which is a subject I have been avoiding for a while, but again, talking a bit more about living here in Italy, and that is to do with, I'm sure that you've already understood what it is by now, by the title of this video, which is the cost of living in Italy. And the thing is, in my opinion, it's such a wide and vast subject that I would prefer to talk about it in a few videos rather than just get into it in one video and try to go a little bit further in depth on it. But tonight, the subject matter that we're going to be talking about is very much about the pizza pasta and amore. Because recently I got a comment, I think it was this past week, and I, this is something that I do get asked about quite often. But before we get too much deeper into this video, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated because it does help out the channel. And of course, as always, the biggest thank you to those of you who are helping to make content like this possible through Patreon. Thank you so much for being a part of this. If you're also interested in becoming a monthly patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Rafael de Furia. Let me just quickly read the comment that finally kicked my butt into uh, actually talking about this subject because I've lightly touched on it, but I haven't really gone into it too much. But anyway, on my video, Italian apartment tour moving to Italy, video number 86 from IB Incognito. I like that username. <laughs> and it just so happens to be kind of interesting timing that it happened to be on that video because there is a chance I might just happen to be moving again soon. But will I be staying in Rovigo? Will I even be staying in Italy? That's the question. I guess we'll find out soon. Anyway, IB Incognito's comment was, Hey Rafael, love your videos and Italy. Never been though. But, Juana, could you recommend an average monthly budget to live off over there uh, for rent, Wi-Fi, pizza? Of course, because you have to have a pizza budget. This is very important. Everybody knows when you live in Italy, the budgetary needs of making sure that you have a pizza budget is necessary. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one. But anyway, pizza, water, heating, food, pizza. Yes, very important subject. <laughs> Everything. Um, so... Actually, this week, I definitely wanted to talk about pizza. Surprise, surprise. Pizza pasta amore. <laughs> but for real, though, I wanted to talk about the subject of going out in Italy and the costs that can be associated with that. Most of the costs I'm going to be talking about in this video are mostly going to be about the area that I live. But when I can compare and contrast between other areas, I will do so. But for where I live, I would say the prices here are on the higher end of mid-range, um, all the way up to expensive. You can definitely find places in the country that have lower prices, and you can definitely find places that have higher prices. But I would say where I live is on the high end of average. There are some places that even here to go out, I would definitely call expensive but it is definitely not as expensive as life in Alto Adige or up in Milan, for example, or Rome. So anyway, starting off with the most important subject of all, pizza. When you're going out for pizza in Italy, generally we're talking about getting an individual pizza, a pizza per person. Like if you're going out with a group of friends, you don't get a large pizza. In Italy, that would be called a family pizza. And so here, if you compare a normal Italian sized pizza in comparison to what we might find in the States, it's not like a little mini personal pizza and it's a little bit larger than what some might call like a personal sized pizza. I, for many people, I know actually for some Americans who come over here, they find the personal individual pizza to be way too much for them. And actually it sparked a, a couple of com funny conversations that I've had with people about people always saying about how Americans have such huge portion sizes, but then you come to Italy and even though the portions can be smaller, the overall meals are huge sometimes. But then when we're talking about a simple margarita pizza, a cheese pizza with just the cheese and the sauce and the dough, simple pizza. We're probably talking about six to eight euros at a lot of places, but I know there are some places in the country where that can go a bit higher all the way from 12 to 15. Um, where I live that, say maybe 11 to 
thirteen fifty price range would be a pizza with more expensive toppings or with multiple toppings on top, um, or like if you start piling things on top. Uh, Pizzas are generally a lot more simple here, and for me personally, they don't usually have enough cheese, so what I usually end up doing is ordering um, double cheese, like extra cheese. That's just a personal preference of mine. For a lot of Italians, they think it's way too much cheese, like what we would consider in the US as a normal amount here, it's like almost like nauseating for some people. But the general type of pizza that I would be more likely to get would be what's called salamino picante or salame picante, which is what we would call in the United States pepperoni. But if we're talking about pepperoni in Italian, we're talking about peppers. We're not talking about like sliced spicy salami, not that like little red salami that cups up and is beautiful. And I haven't seen cupped up pepperoni here in Italy. That's just different. And generally the fat is a lot larger. But anyway, different story for a different day but anyway salamino picante salami picante along with uh, black olives and also black olives when you order them on a pizza here in my experience i've been to more places that actually don't have sliced uh pre-sliced uh olives black olives they just put the whole thing pitted though uh and then the other thing that i like on top is also parmesan but parmesan in italy is often considered at a pizzeria as a as a topping. It's not something that what you would get in a shaker back in the States and actually just put on top of your pizza like you would, say, red pepper flakes. Here, if you order grana or parmesan, people argue they're completely different. I will argue that they're very similar, almost the same thing, but I actually do prefer the flavor of parmesan over grana. But anyway, Again, separate story for a different day, but it will be a good quality um, Parmesan, generally speaking. But if you do go someplace and they will have that really finely grated Parmesan cheese available for you, it will come available in like a little uh, a bowl, like a glass bowl with a metal lid on top and a spoon inside. And that is more for pasta than for pizza. I've never seen that served when you go to a pizza place. It's a little bit different from what I've come to know pizza as growing up in the US. When we're talking about pizza specifically, also pizza culture in Italy is a little bit different because you have a place where you actually go and sit down at pizzeria. That's like a place where you'll go for dinner and have a like a meal. Whereas if you get pizza al taglio, that's a place where you would more get it and take it to go or stand there and eat it and actually stand, not sit uh, most of the time. And they'll pre-slice it for you usually. And they'll have these big like uh, um, sheets of pizza there. And they usually do it by the weight. Some places do it by the slice. But more often than not, it seems as though from what I've seen that you actually get it by the weight. Anyway, so going for a sit-down dinner, that will be something that will vary greatly depending on where you are and depending on the type of restaurants available in that area. And I would say that going out for an evening in Italy can be very comparable to going out for an evening in many other places. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily more expensive or less expensive. Maybe in the South, things can be a bit more reasonable, but... I would say I've paid very similar prices here to what I've paid in other countries that are considered to be more expensive. And I know people who've come to Italy from, say, Spain, for example, and have spent time there and actually consider prices in Italy to be a little bit on the high side. And probably the lowest cost place that I've seen here in Rovigo, where I live, would maybe be, say, including drinks and everything, maybe 15 to $18 per person. And that would be a couple small um, courses that make up a decent meal. Nothing so amazing, but definitely worth trying just for the experience itself because it's this little kind of hole in the wall place and it's one older gentleman and he does everything he's the waiter he's the chef he's the this he's the that it's very much a worthwhile experience to check out but i'm not going to say it's necessarily the best food if it, you wanted to go to say a normal cost restaurant like sit down restaurant with multiple courses that could end up costing maybe say 20 Five twenty-seven to thirty-five-ish per person. It really depends on what you order and how many drinks you order, or if you order drinks at all. If you order just water, or if you order just um, like uh, sodas, and then also 
often water won't be one of those things that you get for free or if they if you ask for free if you ask for tap water they'll you'll get a look like what's wrong with you or even people have said to me in some places that oh it's illegal we're not allowed to do it and it's like in a place where the water was actually drinkable and keep in mind if you're someone who's just getting water just because you want something to drink but you're not necessarily wanting to spend the money for like a drink or a soda or whatever that still won't be free and free refills i have never seen in this country maybe Maybe one time, but I that may I could be confusing it with another country I've been to. I'm 99% sure I've never seen free refills here. And if you're wanting to go to a higher end place in the area where I live, you could end up spending say 50 to maybe 85 per person, depending on where you go. There are some places that are a bit more expensive, places that are a bit less expensive. There's really a, a really wide range. Uh, and I know that even you can find some similar prices in Rome and Milan, but I know also of places that do cost a lot more there. I can't necessarily go into specifics about price ranges. That's not that's really not something that's so specific, but I can't really go into those price ranges because I haven't been in Milan for a long time and I've only spent very little time in Rome. But one thing also that's really important to consider that if you're going out for a dinner and if you're going to a place where like you're actually having a nice sit down meal, that there will be a cover charge generally. And that's even if you go to some pizza places or even if you go to a um, like an all you can eat places that there very often will be that cover charge. Not always but most of the time more often than not you will definitely have at least a per person cover charge but it can be a couple of euros um, that is on top of your meal so don't be surprised if you see that and so actually when you're in like touristy places like super touristy places you'll see signs that say no cover charge because it's something that especially for people coming from north america can be a bit odd to have to pay for the the, the forks and knives and plates and the actual tablecloth. But I'm not going to end up going into that because every time I go into it, it sparks a whole debate about what it covers and what it's for and if it's a tip or if it's not a tip and this and that and if you should even tip at all in Italy. Most people I know don't really tip or very minimally tip. One thing that's also very strange for us is that say you go out for a steak meal in the United States, it's very common for us to have like, say maybe some asparagus or mashed potatoes or broccoli and mashed potatoes on the side. And that's that's part of the, the price of the plate that's actually included there. Whereas here, and not just about steak, but if you're getting various different things, that if you want those those things that for us would be a normal part of what would be included, it would be an extra charge. And that could be an extra three to five euros, depending on the type of place that you go to. Or maybe if you're really lucky and find a really cheap place, maybe three, 250, something like this. But going back to, I was mentioning about all you can eat places. For sushi, like an all you can eat sushi place where I live, if you're going for lunch, I believe it's between 1290 and 1590 plus the cost of drinks. And then for dinner, it can be 1590 to 2590, depending on the place. I'm, I forget exactly, exactly, but this is a rough range uh, that you can end up finding plus the cost of drink, beer, whatever you decide to get along with it. And also, of course, that does not include dessert. But one thing that actually can be really fun, and some people do it instead of actually going out for a proper dinner later in the evening, or some people will do it as a snack before the dinner, is that they will go for aperitivi. And to go for an aperitif in the evening at a lot of places, especially in the Veneto, that you will find that they'll serve like little sandwiches or little little snacks that you can have along with your drink. Uh, it used to be more before the whole 2020, what's gone on this year, especially you could go to places in Milan and they would have big buffets or small, sometimes just small buffets where you could go up and fill up a plate with um, little sandwiches, little snacks, nuts, and so on. Uh, and that's just covered with the cost of your drink. There's one place here in Rovigo where I actually recorded a video a few weeks ago. And I think I actually mentioned about the, the what they had brought out for uh, for the drink that I got. And at that place, for each drink that you order, they will bring out more and more snacks. So it's even if you, the cost of the drink maybe might be a little bit more, but say we're talking about maybe 350 instead of 250 
here so or two so it's actually very very worthwhile not necessarily that it's going to be the highest quality of snacks but it's it doesn't taste bad like it's actually pretty good stuff definitely something i and my friends have enjoyed from time to time and it's it can be a really pleasant evening like on a nice early summer evening and to have that option to just sit out and just enjoy the evening have a spritz or something uh not that i'm necessarily someone who drinks so much maybe once in a while i'll have something but yeah, definitely a pleasant experience. Even when I've gone out and have ordered just a soda and not an alcoholic drink, they've still brought me those things nonetheless. But of course, it depends on the place where you go. Not all of Italy is like this. And even in the places where you'll find this, not every place that you go will offer this to you. But then if you're wanting to go out in the evening for drinks, this is a very different situation. And for a cocktail, where I live, you could really pay anything from, say, about maybe six euros, five euros to about 11, 12 euros. It depends on what you're getting. Or even for some nice whiskeys on the higher end, say, maybe 12 or 13 for just for just a cup. And on the low end, maybe four euros. It really, there's a big, big gap in what you find. And of course, there are those places that are kind of more she-she, like this is, the, this is the cool place to go for the drinks and it's not really any different than anywhere else. And those places will charge that little bit extra because of the experience that you get while you're there. But then there's the other places that are more kind of, I guess we could call it the places where people don't necessarily go to show off and just go to have a good time, just hang out with their friends. And those places will be on the lower side. But of course, going to a cocktail bar, you'll have a lot more options for the types of liqueurs available and so you might be able to find something that suits your palate just that little bit more but anyway i think this is a good place to wrap up for this video and of course if you have any questions or if there are any costs about living in italy that you want to know about i might be able to include that in a future video i've got a couple of ideas in mind for what the next one will be i'm not sure when that will come out exactly but i'm assuming that there's probably going to be at least two more videos on the subject of the costs of living in Italy, but I thought this would be a good way to just jump into it. So thank you again so much for joining me on another Friday night and a huge thank you to those of you who've subscribed and liked the videos and shared the videos. Of course, that is so greatly appreciated and even a bigger thank you to those of you who helped to make these videos possible through Patreon. It is truly appreciated what you do to help me be able to continue with this project. And of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia, and I will see you all next time. Later. Later.